I will do something by and by. Don't care what. Teach, sew, act, write, anything to help the family. I will be rich and famous and happy before I die. See if I won't. Born November 29, 1832 in Germantown, Philadelphia, Louisa May Alcott was a very fascinating woman with a very eventful life. She experienced the highs and lows of life, including poverty, fighting slavery by helping with the Underground Railroad, being an Army Civil War nurse, and going door to door and helping women register to vote. Louisa's father, Amos Brunson Alcott, was well known, but not always for the best reasons. Some saw him as a great philosopher, holding conversations, symposia in which participants paid a small fee, on various topics. Others saw him as just a crazy man with even crazier ideas. Think crazy old Maurice from Beauty and the Beast. Louisa's mom, Abigail May Alcott, was the main supporter of her love of reading and writing. Abigail was the dutiful wife of Bronson until after a failed attempt of creating a vegetarian community that did not honor money. The constant and decreasing poverty they suffered kicked her into action. She tried to support the family by becoming a social worker, one of the earliest practitioners of this profession, and then by running an employment agency. Bronson observed his first two daughters taking hundreds and hundreds of pages of notes on their individual behaviors. As a test, when Louisa was just two years old, Brunson supplied both his daughters an apple with the explicit instructions to not eat it. He was attempting to make his ancestors proud by instilling traits such as self-denial and self-criticism. Long story short, two-year-old Louisa ate her apple while her older sister did not. Brunson interpreted this as a sign of Louisa's overly willful nature. Over time, though, Louisa was deeply attached to her father. She resented his efforts to stifle her independence and individuality. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. Alcott had many famous friends and was also able to learn much from them. Henry David Thoreau helped Alcott learn about botany at Walden Pond. She later wrote a poem called Thoreau's Flute just for him. Emerson granted her an all-access pass to his immense library. Alcott had many a conversation with Frederick Douglass about the abolition of slavery. Alcott had talks with Margaret Fuller about women's rights. And she also had conversations with Julia Ward Howe concerning women's suffrage. Though it seemed that poverty of possessions was another close relative, Alcott had access to a wealth of knowledge and experiences. She is too fond of books, and it has turned her brain. Many know of Louisa M. Alcott because of her book entitled Little Women, written in 1869. However, Alcott wrote this story initially to help her father's writing career. An editor at a publishing house named Thomas Niles asked 35-year-old Alcott if she would like to write a novel for girls. Being a tomboy and the exact opposite of what a shining star for girls at the time would be, Alcott turned down the offer. About a year later, Bronson was attempting to get his philosophy manuscript published. Niles told Bronson that if he could get Alcott to write a non-fairy book for girls, he would indeed publish his manuscript. Alcott wrote about growing up with her three sisters, this became the hugely successful first part of Little Women. Talk about quid pro quo. I long to be a man, but as I can't fight, I will content myself with working for those who can. Alcott began her duty of Army war nurse by sewing uniforms in Concord. She was able to enlist as an Army nurse in 1862. While working in a hotel turned hospital in Washington, D.C. for the soldiers who were dying, Alcott helped doctors perform surgeries, in particular amputations. She would write about her experiences in a journal and in letters to her family. Though fictionalized, these journal entries and letters became the basis for her hospital sketches, an account of the stressful but meaningful wartime experiences she had. When I had youth, I had no money. Now that I have money, I have no time. And when I get the time, if I even do, I shall have no health to enjoy life. Alcott became very ill after two months of nursing in D.C. with typhoid fever and pneumonia. At this time, the standard treatment was a concoction called calomel, a mercury compound used in medicines throughout the 19th century. The symptoms of mercury poisoning, weak immune system, vertigo, hallucinations, lasted for the rest of her life. To combat the pain and treat her lupus possibly triggered by the poisoning, Alcott took opium. Alcott eventually died of a stroke at age 55 in 1888, never having married or having biological children. She took care of her orphaned niece after the death of her sister May in 1879. The child was named after Louisa, but called Lulu for short. 
Louisa was buried in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, Concord, Massachusetts. Louisa May Alcott had a very full life in her 55 years. She was an early suffragette, going door to door in Massachusetts to encourage women to vote, But she also had a fun side in which she would pretend to be the servant of her family's home in Concord, Massachusetts, because fans, after connecting with the successful Little Women novel, would travel to Concord to see where Alcott grew up. Needless to say, she didn't like the attention. It is still possible, if one so desires, to pack up and travel to Concord, where you can pay a visit to the Alcott family home at 399 Lexington Road, Concord, Massachusetts.